Well, we all know contemporary news stories can be infuriating, but actually they give us crucial opportunities to see timeless principles that have been lost as the political class turns America into a collectivized command and control dystopia. So let's defend those principles right now and see how we got to this point in America in part two of our series of man versus the ever-growing state. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. And you know, in part one of this series, we took a very serious look at the fallacious so-called social contract, which is not in any way a real contract at all. There's no voluntary permission given, and it's been used by politicians as a rationale to rule over you. Well, even well-known philosophers such as John Locke made the mistake of saying that the state, i.e. the government, is there to protect you and your property from threats and theft by others. And yet, the only way that the state can exist is by taking your property and threatening your freedom. So, this is a major problem, and the Founding Fathers recognized part of this problem, and they took a cue from Aristotle when they wrote the rules for the first American government, the Articles of Confederation, and later when they, unfortunately, through the prodding of centralizers like Alexander Hamilton, wrote the United States Constitution. But the problem remained something that 19th century American philosopher Lysander Spooner acknowledged, noting that even the U.S. Constitution is not a real contract, but is something forced on people with the demand that they accept the U.S. federal government or flee to another place that is also going to infringe on their rights, probably to a greater extent. And Spooner noted that the Constitution has not stopped the federal politicians from taking more power and infringing on more of our rights. So how do we exist in such a system, one that is predicated on a non-existent so-called contract that's actually forced on us and one where the politicians are barely, if at all, holding themselves to their own oaths to uphold that document? Well, this is where the final vestige of founding thought actually becomes very important. It's the concept of decentralization, the concept of smaller spheres of control. You see, in both economics and in politics, there's a principle about the difference between small spheres of control and large spheres of control. In large spheres of control, the people making the decisions often don't have the localized knowledge and information to make proper decisions. Therefore, you're going to see many more bad decisions versus local spheres of control. In large spheres of control, the people who make those bad decisions can harm more people when they make those decisions. And in fact, it's more difficult to escape large spheres of control. In smaller spheres of control, you not only have the information on hand, but you can also flee more easily to another area. It's not exactly a competitive market system, but it's closer. It doesn't actually let you withhold your money because there is going to be some form of government wherever you are, but it does allow you to switch over, which is closer to a competitive system. And competition is extremely important to see responsiveness to the consumer. In fact, this is the sort of thing that Thomas Jefferson made sure he expressed in 1798 in his Kentucky Resolutions, where he expressed the concept of nullification by the states. Nullification of unconstitutional federal laws, and it's something that we're starting to see pop up now in contemporary America. In the Western United States, we're starting to see people in those areas protesting the fact that the United States government runs the Western lands. Those are lands that should not be in federal control. They should actually be under state control according to the Constitution. So this principle is alive and could be very well right now and growing if the word gets spread about it. It's a lesson that we can pull out of all this frustration we see as politicians push in Washington, D.C. for more collectivism. It's something that we can thank the Founding Fathers for handing down to us, and perhaps we can hand on to our progeny. 
In our next part, we'll talk about some of those areas where the federal government has encroached and we'll offer some dire warnings about what those things could bring about. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith. Thank mm -hmm. you.